Go and Beautiful Souls. It's Jack Cox, author of Love Not Fear. I want to start by apologising for last week. The video I put up last week offering to help people uh, was taken down by YouTube. Probably because I mentioned official annual death figures and YouTube don't like facts so it makes you wonder the darkness is rising it seems sometimes but that's really what I want to talk to you a little bit about today I want to talk to you about the darkness and the light and what is our purpose here on earth a lot of people who call themselves light workers oh, that's not straight a lot of people call themselves light workers and they think their job is to work only for the light and to destroy the darkness but i have come to understand and you may agree with me and you may not that our job is to find balance between darkness and light We can never live in a world that is just light. What would be the point? How would we know it was light if we didn't have anything to contrast it with? It's like William Shakespeare said, nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. We go inside and we tell ourselves stories about what it means. If we don't do that, if we don't tell ourselves stories about what it means, we just accept it, observe it, experience it and move on, then it's neither good nor bad. Good or bad is a matter of perception, it's a matter of perspective. I mean, a pride of lions brings down a wildebeest in the Serengeti. I mean, is that good or bad? Well, it depends whether you're a lion or a wildebeest. It's a matter of perspective. The wildebeest doesn't want to die. But the lion doesn't want... They don't want their cubs to starve. It's all a matter of perspective. A fox chases a hare. Brings it down. It's food. We say killing is bad, but eating is good, and some animals are carnivores. So nothing is either good nor bad, it's the thinking that makes it so. All this f fascist censorship that's going on in the moment, it's happening. Yes, it's the darkness. But it isn't bad. It just is. It's neither good nor bad. It just is. Our job is just to experience it, to observe it, to let it pass through us, and to help those who are suffering. You know, these things are causing people to suffer. Suffering isn't bad. We grow through our suffering. In Buddhism, they say that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Suffering doesn't come from the pain. It comes from going inside and telling ourselves stories about the pain. Whether that's a physical pain or whether it's uh, an emotional pain. Look, I'm not preaching here. I'm not saying that I'm any better than anybody else because I think differently. I'm still struggling. Heck, I'm still struggling with something that happened to me when I was three. <laughs> you know, I'm just like the rest of you. 
and I will just mention that the thing that happened to me when I was three um, is a very, very beautiful soul on this planet. Her name is Brigitte, French lady, and she's helping me with it at the moment, and I'm very, very grateful to her for that. And uh, she's there to help with trauma, and I'll put her details down below in the description. I've done it before. And there's another beautiful soul, beautiful lady in Glastonbury who does similar work. And I'll put her details down below as well. And I've said, I'm going to, I said it last time that Facebook took it down. I'm not professionally qualified as a trauma therapist or whatever. But if you just want someone to talk to, I'm here and I'm available. And I'll put my details down below as well. The same as I did last week. <laughs> Maybe this time it won't be taken down. I don't know. Um, that was my first strike. So I'm allowed three strikes, I believe. And then my channel gets closed down. So we need to find alternative platforms. So let's just experience what's happening at the moment and help those among us who are suffering through it. But let's not label it as bad. It just is. Yes, we can shine our light. Yes, we can sh rebalance the light and the dark because it's become very out of balance at the moment in favour of the dark. But we'll never get away with the darkness completely. And that's really all I wanted to say. We'll never get rid of the darkness. We shouldn't even try to get rid of the darkness. You know my cosmology, my cosmology, my creation theory. I've talked about it before. I take a rather flippant view of it, if you like, but I take source or God or whatever you want to say. All alone, all alone. Not even all alone in the universe, but all alone before the universe. So not even all alone as the universe, but before the universe, all alone. Can you imagine what that must be like to be sentient, to be aware and to know that you're the only being that exists? There's nothing else. You've got no playmates. So I say that the Big Bang or whatever happened back then was God experiencing a, a trauma. Creating lots and lots of playmates, but not creating as, a, as in making something external, but becoming. Yeah, or when I'm being flippant, I say pretending to be you and me and her and him and Ethel on the counter. So as to have some interaction. And that's what we're here to do. We're God experiencing itself, we're the universe experiencing itself. We're here to have interactions and some of those interactions might be pleasant and some might be unpleasant but that's the whole point that's how we grow that's how we evolve and there's another paradox isn't it god is perfect god is complete yet god is still evolving through us You've got to understand these paradoxes if you're going to understand reality. It's not as simple as we'd like to think. And it's not as simple as we've been told. I write in my book about the game we did not devise. This very simplistic view of life and the world. Um, highly skewed in favour of the globalist elite that we've been brought up with since we were children. And it's not true. 
So we need to stop playing the game we did not devolve, uh, we did not devise, and devise a fairer one. Um, to come to a more accurate worldview, and that's a lot of what I talk about in these videos. I'm not going to go over a lot of old ground again today. All the videos are still available on YouTube if you want to look them up or you can read the book. As I say, I'm not here for your money. Yes, you can buy the book from Amazon if you want to and I'm very grateful if you do because I've got to pay the rent. But you can also download it free from my website. I'm not here. I'm not after your money. I'm really not after your money. If only we could all just do what we do and give it away. Which brings me back to the free gift economy I keep talking about. If only we could take money out of the equation. Money is the foundation of this game we did not devise. But if we do away with money, then the game we did not devise falls apart. And the globalist elite fall apart. Here we come ordinary people like you and me and Ethel on the counter. Sorry, I nicked that from David Icke. It's good though, isn't it? Um, but we don't need to suffer. We can feel the pain. We can feel the frustration. But we don't need to suffer. It's a mental attitude. So that's all I want to say today. Love you all. Namaste.